I think at the holidays, calories don't count, right? I mean, around my house, they definitely don't count because if they did, I'd be having way too many calories. But that is the point of the holidays and that's what I love about Christmas. I am always baking and making things and today is nothing different. It is a delicious cookies and cream fudge. It's really simple, it goes together in a few minutes. And what more could you want? Calorie free fudge. Okay, it's not calorie free, but I don't care. It's so good and you're gonna wanna make it. I like to just have the pan ready to go. So by the time you're done, you don't have to worry about having a pan that isn't ready. So just line an eight by eight baking pan with some parchment paper. Just cut it to fit so it fits down the bottom and up the sides both ways. I like to clip mine over with binder clips. You don't have to, but it keeps the parchment out of the way. Once that's ready, just set it aside. After your pan is set aside, just get ready the Oreos. This is cookies and cream fudge, and so you need those chocolate but delicious cookies. You don't have to use the brand name, doesn't matter what you use. Although, I do think in this instance, the Oreo brand is slightly better. I know, a little bit elitist, but come on. Just put them into a large Ziploc bag. I like to use a meat pounder. You can use a rolling pin. I just find on my wood rolling pin that it kind of gets little divots in it when I use it to crush things, which kind of annoys me, so I like to use my meat pounder. And you can get your aggression out that way. Just pound the Oreos. I like some big pieces, some little pieces. It doesn't really matter. You don't want a fine crumb. Just kind of pound them all over and then set them aside. Next, you want to finely chop up your white chocolate. You want to use white chocolate and don't use a fake white chocolate that's just really going to have stabilizers and like fake grossness in it. A lot of times called almond bark, but it really doesn't work the same way. It doesn't really going to work with this recipe. You want white chocolate, which yes, you're right. That is not real chocolate. It's the cocoa butter, but it's going to have better flavor and is what you want to use. Chop it up really fine, set it aside, and then we'll move on to the base of our fudge. Yes, it's a lot of sugar, but it doesn't matter. So pour in your evaporated milk, and then your sugar. And more sugar. And then top it off with a little bit of sugar. And then you wanna add your butter. Put that right into the stove, stir it together just so it's all moistened, and then bring it up to a boil. I know it sounds scary to boil it, but as long as you're stirring it and keeping it moving, it shouldn't scorch. It's also gonna to help to use a very heavy bottom kettle. When it comes up to a boil, keep it stirring and then boil it till it's at softball stage. That's somewhere between 231 and like 240, I think. I usually like to go around 235 to 237. That sounds exact, but if you have a good candy thermometer, it's no problem. Once it's at that stage, just pull it off the heat, add in your white chocolate that we've prepared, and some vanilla bean paste. Now, I know you're probably thinking, uh, who has vanilla bean paste? Yeah, I have vanilla bean paste, and I love it because it's kind of like a flavor bomb. It's awesome, delicious. If you don't have it, just use regular vanilla extract. Not imitation, but vanilla extract. Either one's gonna work great. And one jar of marshmallow cream. I know, this could not sound any more decadent, but believe me, it's important. Stir the chocolate, marshmallow cream, and vanilla together till it's completely mixed in and smooth. You don't want any lumps of that because then it's gonna look really inconsistent. Once there's no chunks of that chocolate, just add in some of those Oreos that we got ready before, quite a bit because you definitely wanna know they're there and they taste delicious. Stir those in, then pour it all right into your prepared pan. Once it's all in there, make sure it's out to the corners of the pan and then put on some more Oreos on top. Make sure to press them in slightly. The fudge kind of hardens pretty quickly, so I just like to press them down to make sure they adhere. Once they're on top, just set it somewhere to cool. I live in Iowa and it gets pretty cool, so my entryway kind of stays really cold because it's not heated, so I just kind of set everything out there. Works really well, actually, for extra space during the holidays. But if you don't happen to have that, just set it in a fridge, just keep it covered so it doesn't dry out. After four to six hours of cooling, you can just take it out of the pan, that parchment sling comes in handy, and just cut it into bite-sized pieces. Don't do too big because this is decadent, and the bigger you go, it's just gonna feel more guilty. And that way you can eat a whole bunch more of smaller pieces. That's all there is to it. Store in an airtight container if there's any left to store or just put it on a plate, give it away. It is so delicious and such a fun new way to have a delicious fudge. 
Can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. If you agree, make sure to like this video, share it around on all platforms. I love to hear from you guys and see how you're enjoying the holidays.